Good morning. We're about uh, the administrator of NASA, uh, Charlie Bolden, is about to announce the most powerful rocket in history. Uh, the administration uh, is coming forth with the plan to flesh out uh, what was passed in the NASA authorization bill uh, a year ago. It's a plan forward that keeping the International Space Station uh, alive until at least 2020 <clears throat> with a series of commercial rockets taking crew and cargo to and from the space station then allows NASA to get out beyond low Earth orbit and start to explore the heavens, which is the job that NASA has always been tasked to do. Uh, this rocket uh, is coming in uh, at the cost of what not only what we estimated in the NASA Authorization Act, but less. Uh, the cost of the rocket over a five to six year period in the NASA Authorization Bill was to be no more than $11.5 billion. This cost is $10 billion for the rocket. The projected cost for the capsule, or what they call the MPCV, the multi-purpose crew vehicle, in that time frame is $6 billion. And then the reworking of the ground support to launch the new rocket and its facilities uh, in the modernization of those facilities is about $2 billion over that time. or a total of $18 billion in that period of time uh, up to uh, 2017. I'd like to uh, show you what the new rocket looks like. <clears throat> this rocket uh, has a core that is a derivative of the external tank, the apricot-colored external tank. The old external tank would come to about here in the stack of the space shuttle to give you uh, an estimate of size. This is the smaller version of this rocket. This is in the range of the 70 to 77 ton. The old external tank would have come to about here. So you can think of the entire stack of the space shuttle being about this high. You see the relative size of the rockets. On either side are depicted five second solid rocket boosters, but ultimately NASA will run a competition for these boosters to be solids or liquids. There will be five space shuttle main engines in the tail of this core. And on top of the core then is a second stage, an improved J2X that's already under development. And then the crew module on the top with the escape system. Now what this does is you remember in the aftermath of the destruction of the Space Shuttle Columbia, the Gaiman Commission, Admiral Gaiman, said you fly the shuttle just as long as you have to in order to build the space station because of the components that were designed to fit into the cargo bay. You build the space station and you replace it with a safer rocket. That's what they're doing on the commercial rockets, and that's how this is designed, with the crew on the top of the rocket, with the ability to escape. On the pad, if there's an explosion, as well as all the way to orbit. So 
I can't say enough good things about the lady that's standing here next to me. Uh, Kay Bailey Hutchinson has truly been a leader, uh, not only in our space subcommittee, but now as the ranking member of the full committee. And uh, she, in large part, has uh, brought us to this day. Uh, Kay is going to speak in a minute, but uh, we want the explanation of the entire system uh, to come from the number one person at NASA, the administrator of NASA, General Charlie Bolden. Thank you, Senator. And I, I will, um, as I am wont to do, I, uh, I have a disclaimer to start with. Since I'm the administrator and not the expert uh, at NASA, there's a press availability, I think, at 1130, uh, where Bill Gerstenmeyer and the team that is responsible for putting the system together will be available to answer specific questions about the configuration, uh, the schedule, and everything else. So I would, I would defer to them. I'm, I'm going to give you a message that, uh, that I, th I think is important and, and a message I want you to take to the American public as well as our international partners. And, and I do want to thank all the members of the Congress. Uh, the Senator is absolutely right. Um, I don't want to get in trouble here, but I, I, I think the queen bee of all this has been oh. Senator Hutchinson, uh, who it, she's another Episcopalian like me. So we've been worried about fires in Texas and Camp Allen and Bastrop and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we don't always disagree on things. The next chapter of America's space exploration story is being written today. Today I'm pleased to announce that NASA has selected the design of its new deep space system that will take American astronauts further into space than any nation has gone before and create jobs right here at home. Private companies are preparing to take over transportation to the International Space Station in low Earth orbit. Satellites are on their way to Jupiter and the moon, and plans for human mission to an asteroid and onto Mars are taking shape. In combination with the crew capsule already under development, commercialization of astronaut travel to low Earth orbit, extension of activities of the International Space Station on a fresh focus on new technologies, the new Space Launch System, or SLS, is key to implementing the plan laid out by President Obama and Congress in the bipartisan 2010 NASA Authorization Act. The SLS will be the cornerstone of our deep space human exploration program. President Obama has challenged us at NASA to be bold and to dream big, and that's exactly what we do. While I was proud to fly on the space shuttle, tomorrow's explorers will dream of one day walking on Mars. The selection of the vehicle needed to transport our astronauts into deep space is one of the most important decisions to be made this decade. And it requires a major commitment on the part of the American taxpayer. And that's why the administration insisted on doing the due diligence required so that we could get it right. But we've also been, been making steady progress toward realizing president, the President's and Congress's vision of deep space exploration while doing so in a more affordable way. We've been driving down the cost on the Orion and SLS contracts by adopting new ways of doing business and have achieved hundreds of millions of dollars of savings each year. We're also changing the way we spend the taxpayers' money by providing more transparency and increasing competition. We're handing off transportation to the International Space Station to our private sector partners so we can focus on deep space exploration. We're already building a space capsule, the MPCV, to transport our astronauts into deep space. Now, we've selected a heavy lift rocket to carry the crew and capsule to destinations in space no nations have ever gone before. Our decision to go with a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen launch vehicle system was based on NASA's analysis to reduce cost, increase flexibility, and leverage the U.S. leadership in this technology. The development flights will take advantage of existing boosters and other hardware, while companies compete for advanced boosters to enable greater capability for our new heavy lift rocket. The first development flight or mission is targeted for 2017, with additional flights following that will get us on target to reach an asteroid and even Mars. We believe the President's request for, space launch, for the Space Launch System and the Orion multipurpose crew vehicle in 2012 are at the appropriate levels. And today, 
the administration has made a long-term commitment to these critical deep space exploration vehicles. In addition to these two building blocks, we're investing in the technologies to allow humans to live and work in deep space, which will allow us to reach destinations such as an asteroid in Mars. This is a great day for NASA, I think, for NASA and the nation. And I really do want to thank the bipartisan leadership in the Congress for getting us to this day. Um, we, as I said, will answer detailed questions at the press availability at 11.30, but, but it's my honor right now to introduce to you uh, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson for her comments. Well, thank you. Uh, this is a day that we have been looking forward to for a long time. Uh, I think it's no secret that we had hoped that it would be sooner uh, because we didn't want to lose any of the efficiencies and make sure that uh, we didn't run up the costs unnecessarily. Uh, I had a meeting yesterday with General Bolden, with Jack Lew, um, Senator Nelson, in which we really hunkered down, I think, on the timetable going forward. Uh, because we do want to be on the same page, and uh, I have the commitments now from everyone that is in the decision-making process that I believe uh, really are going forward now all as one with one goal. And that was important to me, uh, that the OMB, the administration, NASA, and the members of Congress be all together. And I think now, from everything that I have been told and the commitments that were made, uh, that we are. Uh, I am very excited about this rocket system. Uh, this is the piece that I believe is going to be the true long-term future. You can't have the preeminence in space that we have enjoyed uh, over the past decades without seeing beyond the immediate term goal, which of course is the space station and making sure that we fully utilize the space station. That is the intermediate goal. The long-term goal has to be what's out there that we haven't discovered yet. So. I don't want to raise the hopes that everything is going to go exactly in a box uh, by an outline that has been put forward, because we are pushing the envelope. We're going to the next iteration of space leadership. And this today, I believe, is the commitment that America is making to assure that we're not going to be the also-rans we are going to continue to be the world leader in finding out what are the capabilities out there that we haven't even discovered yet. Is there something in energy? Is there something in national security? Is there something in uh, the geophysical uh, on Mars or on an asteroid uh, that would help us here on Earth? So it is a great day for America. It is a commitment that NASA NASA is going to lead the pack. We have commercial for crew, uh, uh, getting the crew to the space station. That's great. We're committed to other parts of our science in NASA. But the leader is going to be the, the launch system that is being announced today. And the next thing that Senator Nelson and I and Senator Bozeman and Congresswoman Johnson uh, Congressman Hall, everyone who cares about the vision for America to lead in space is going to be the timetable. The timetable for the contracts to start being modified so that our experienced people will be kept to help modify and design the vehicle that will take us uh, beyond Earth's orbit. Uh, so the timetable will be what I'm looking for. I want to see the contracts modified uh, right away. And I'm told uh, by all of those who can make it happen that we are, in fact, uh, mere weeks away, maybe one or two weeks away from modifying the contracts and assuring that we are going to have the designers with the experience uh, to take us to the next level. So uh, I am very pleased to be here today and have really a new beginning, and that's what we've been looking for since our last shuttle came down, um, is the new beginning, and I think we have it today. 
Uh, let me just say, too, uh, my partner here, Bill Nelson, he, he gave me credit, and I don't know if Queen Bee would be how I'd like to be referred to. Your Highness is not what I'm looking for, but um, I want to say that uh, Senator Nelson,